How you doing? Thorny? Basically, you after the way that major went, seeing like the last image is like Jake Lucky, that shit trophy, all the like interviews again. Like, what did your mum say to you when you were? Fo- no, don't lift that trophy yet. Yeah. Um, what was she saying? Oh, what did you start for dinner like that? At that point, I just thought, you know what? Shut it down. Like Counter Strike's over. We're over. Well, Look, I mean, we look, might as well. We could yeah, just go ahead and talk, start talking about yeah, that right off the bat because that is actually one of those things where throughout the major, I was wondering who was producing the show and if it was actually the producer that has produced Blast this entire time, Smeal, or if it's uh, Smeal, or if it's somebody else. Because I'm just the the lack of um, the lack of flow in the segments was really jarring, and I was and I'm just sitting here going, this isn't usually how it goes. Usually, it's a pretty smooth kind of thing. They they usually have a pretty good grip on how to run a, sh- a smooth show and how to orchestrate. Because you have to think of it like a symphony or something, right? When you're producing a show, especially a stage show, you have to be thinking about how you're going to build up the emotion in the arena and how get get everybody piped, pumped up, and you're going to show that cool like highlight reel of, of everything that you wanted to, t- you know, the the whole. Well, <laughs> we can talk about that, of course, but. <laughs> But you had you have your you have your your high moments that you keep bringing everybody up to to this peak of energy, and every single time it felt like Blast just kept dropping the ball and saying, "Oh, right, we're gonna bring you all the way up here, and then we're gonna just drop it completely and not announce a team and not announce no 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 we'll we'll bring Banks out onto the stage now to kind of warm up the crowd a little bit to like interact with the crowd a yeah. little bit and then to shout really loud into the screen, and then we'll bring the teams out. It just felt like it was just completely jarring the entire time. And they never really, they, what, what shocks me is that after the first time that you do that, right, where you don't, you may notice that, hmm, okay, it doesn't quite work, uh, you would maybe pivot, make a change, change up the run of show, maybe bring the teams out first, and then, you know, once the teams are out and introduced, then you bring James Banks out to, to, to I don't know, warm up the crowd a little bit while the players are getting set up. You know, there's a little bit of downtime there, cameras are moving around, maybe you bring James out then to kick it off, I don't know. Because there is going to be that drop off as the teams, you know, do their walk out and then walk back to the stage and start getting set up. There's a little bit of a lull in the energy there before you're actually live in the game. I would think that's where you bring James out and actually start uh, having him interact or maybe a quick, you know, pre-match interview, something like that. But uh, it just felt very jarring the entire time. Like they kept uh, they kept fucking up that whole sequence, and it was really uh, surprising to me considering the experience in that production room at Blast. This isn't their first rodeo. I mean, they usually knock it out of the park and uh, when they run their event in uh, the Royal Arena in Copenhagen. Did so, I, mean, I call it though, or did I call it, mate? I did tell everyone before the major, you can go watch that Four Horsemen episode, they've never run a tournament with more than eight teams, as far as I know, and it fucking showed similar, and about half their events are in their home arena that they've been in since 2017, when they were in an unknown arena, which quite frankly, this is what looked even worse about this major, is that arena looked almost identical in layout to the Laxess, the legendary ESL1 Cologne home, where ESL has probably done the best Counter-Strike tournaments ever, where they nailed the production. So first of all, that mythical Blast production, which used to be awesome, especially in the online era, and with all the small amount of teams in the Royal Arena, a lot of that just didn't make it like we're talking about. Like, even beyond just the stage setup, mate, one thing, look, ESL's also terrible for this. They were just as bad at the IM Rio, but it is unbelievable, this thing where producers... I used to think they were fucking up, which is why I would rage tweet. I've realized now this is actually the protocol. You know, in Counter-Strike, when you're in the bomb site, is the tease. You have a protocol, like, he looks here, I look here, the fl- smoker comes in, I flash, you're on your show. Yeah, really like that in production. I can tell now it's the actual conscious decision that the second the last player dies, you cut away from the action to the player's face or the crowd or someone in the crowd with a sign. That includes, and this is a cardinal sin, but ESL does it as well, but they were terrible at blasting it every time. They would cut away on questionable diffusers from the CT, where there's only a CT left. He's diffusing the bomb, and on the timer, because we don't have the actual amount of seconds, we don't know. Is that four point? five seconds or is it 3.9 and he's actually going to fail even though he has a kit and instead of having the tension we would see a fan's face and then it would cut back like oh he won the round and there was a couple I'm not joking where he didn't win the round and you didn't see the bomb explode and them lose the round if you're a casual fan by the way you essentially hopefully the casters said it you just came in the next round like what the, why haven't they got guns what the fuck he just won mm. the round that's mental because here's the problem with that you have a million times in a counter strike game you can cut to the crowd for a start off timeouts themselves are perfect for it then you have all the rounds where it's just a normal death at the end and you can cut away they not only did it on the diffuses they also did it on weapon saves where someone's coming with the terrorist there's no time left the ct peaks and they cut to the crowd and sometimes they lost the gun so they essentially just told them 
like I think you know nothing about couch, like, or forget you know anything about couch, always cut, no matter what, to the crowd. Now, this is the thing we've talked about in the past with the SL. It's just fellating the fucking live audience. Now, I don't know if their logic is by showing the live audience and how sick it is, you'd want to buy tickets. That seems like a bit of a reach because I've always said, yeah. why would you cater to the 15,000 people in the venue if like a million and a half are watching online? Like, you're on the online broadcast. Like, like the thing you said about banks, by the way, I'll give you a little bit of secret sauce if you don't know the industry, guys. You could have banks do all that while the analyst desk's going on on the stream and we don't know about that's just a hype man for the arena that's fine what he's talking about is some of the stuff you do in person is shit on camera it's actually a concept by the way for my favorite genre of music and electronic music drum and bass if you ever go to a drum and bass night and you're drinking alcohol and dancing you're in the floor those day, those MCs who just like spit a bunch of shit bars and say get up hype man everyone go drop the next one rewind that's sick in person it gets the fucking crowd going you don't have crowd mics on the mixes you know you hear everyone going he's getting everyone revved up you know like to switch up to the next song the big part if you ever hear that when they record it and you're just at home listening on headphones you're like you're like listening to awesome music and Snoring, like, yeah. yo man what the fuck you're like shut the fuck get it is there like a fucking track i can turn off get this cut off he he's ruining all the music this is the best music ever mixed all together and this fucking guys talking over the top doing like nursery rhyme level floors like bow selector and a go and a connection like what what are you talking about and you've heard that shit in like the last mix he did so basically i think they, they kept blurring the lines between the crowd and the fucking live broadcast and i also just think like they just, you know, when we always used to say ever since 2020, that take that was the contrarian take, but the most popular take in Counter-Strike was like, I think Blast should get a major. You know what? Rewind. Come out of a pot and punch yourself in the face. You fucking idiot. Blast should never have had a major. They had no business having this major. I'll even throw this out there. I think the only reason they had the major is because I looked, you remember on the broadcast on our watch party, I looked up, what is the name of this stadium? And it's just owned by the Council of Paris. Not even a company, just Paris itself. So if you don't know, between Macron and that, I'm almost certainly just got it for free or like pennies on the dollar and that's why they did the event here like this was actually whack like what I dreamed of with a blast major is it would be in Copenhagen in the Royal, the Royal Arena. Arena you'd have all the shit by the way another thing of blast was you'd have all this shoulder content blast only does comedy shoulder content or generic shoulder content like they don't do they don't even do funny skits I'll even give ESL that like blast doesn't blast just does silly stuff like oh, do we guess the player from just his name or something like this is like little kids shit like this is the last major where's the epic shit where's the like stuff about like the where's like the feature about how Nico hasn't won the major yet where's the feature about what does it mean for Carrigan if he ends on two when Glaive isn't even there what does it mean if fucking Na'Vi fixes everything and win with NP you know what I mean you didn't get any of this shit if you watched the broadcast so I was so underwhelmed mate like we can get to the matches they had their, as usual like a face at London they had unfortunate luck with who beat who and the little teams going through and having no big names that you can't control that you aren't Valve but the part of the production that is your world I'll tell you one thing about flashpoint 2 similar we had the shittest teams you can imagine relative to the top events because we were giving away a million dollars but we fucking killed the production especially our part we, all the content the shoulder content it we had funny stuff but we also had like legit stuff real analysis telestrator segments we had it all like i couldn't i was so underwhelmed and especially in the context it's the last cs goal major like what what a whack way to end and we the end of jake lucky on fucking stream i'm out I'm out. What I was wondering about it is what, okay, how much, because, okay, when it comes to creating shoulder content, right, this is the justification that it comes down to with the uh, tournament organizers is, okay, what's our return on investment for spending money on this content? Uh, and is there a return on investment? And some TOs literally look at it like that, as in, what are we getting out of producing this content? Does it add to the show? Is there any kind of monetary return? Like, what's, what's the deal? And if that balances out, where if it doesn't balance it out where it's worthwhile for them to do that content, where they don't think it's worthwhile to do that content, they just won't do it, which is why at the very beginning with these majors, it was Valve who were footing the bill to fly the producers out, fly the cameramen out, and actually produce these kinds of one-on-one -on -one um interviews right these documentaries these mini docs on the players that uh, that were competing in that major right get right whatever uh and then face it picked up the ball on and did that as well with uh newman i think he was the one who was out there doing like the stewie one and all of that you know but then it never really continued it, it dropped off and we never had anybody who actually continued to push that forward and say no this is a necessity because what i think has happened is that the major now has just become like any other tournament 
And so you have the TOs that are bidding to get these majors. And at some point, it shifted over from it being, or at least this is how I always perceive the major, and this is how us commentators always try to perceive the major and try to push when it came to a major, is that we put petty politics aside between TOs and between casters and between all of that. We put it all aside because the major is about Counter-Strike as a whole, the whole scene, the whole history, the legacy, everything, it all comes together. You push all the bullshit aside and you make the major a celebration of Counter-Strike in general. Like it's supposed to be just this independent event that's just there to celebrate Counter-Strike. And what I think has happened or what I feel like has happened at least over the past several years now is that more and more the major has not be, has sh shifted away from that independent event that's just supposed to be like a World Cup kind of thing to just being another tournament that is run by that to in particular it's just another pgl event it's just an, and in this case it's just another blast event like you say there's nothing to differentiate it from a regular blast event like when throughout this entire major they could have been running it out of the royal arena and this they could have called it a blast fall final for all i know because as far as as far as the, you know the major is concerned yeah. i didn't see anything that i didn't see any shoulder content i didn't see anything that that made it see okay this is a major apart from that one little compilation just one compilation where it's just like you know i i started playing counter-strike because my brother played it you know like that's the best they can do out of fucking 10 years plus of csgo history all of these amazing moments that have happened throughout counter-strike that, that have built this huge storyline that's spanned a decade valve have made billions of dollars off of this fucking game tos have, everybody's made money off of this game like you you could have done so much epic content and you had the time to do it you had months of lead up to this tournament to do all sorts of cool content around the csgo and building this huge storyline this huge celebration and instead what we got was individual like sponsored content by booze companies for commentators which you know fine fair enough i mean we've talked about trying to get more representation for commentators or at least more promotion for commentators for years now so it's just so funny that it's at the major that you know finally you know oh you know behind the scenes with moses you know actually doing some kind of content around the around the commentators the only problem is it's the major like you can't be doing it's not about the commentators it's about the players it's about the game the commentators are a part of that but literally almost all of your shoulder content was just about the commentators so this whole thing, and then the other one is obviously like, oh, look at this trophy that we made. Let me go ahead and wank off on, you know, in this in this shoulder content piece about how we how we're so innovative, three D printing, and then spray painting, and then lacquering our little dinky trophy, right? So oh, remember, they didn't just even play that once or twice. That was being played like I think I saw it about five times. It's played in the yeah, final, yeah, man. They played it all. Time. Yeah, they played it all the time as a thing. The other thing is what you said earlier there, right? First of all. There's no point in running esports if it is only for the sake of finance, right? Spoiler, there's way better ways to make money in the fucking world. Like, that cannot be... The whole point, you know, in theory, when you create something visual, it's art. You are trying to create an experience. So one reason you would do it is to, I don't know, reach for excellence. Like, by that logic, then people would go, if you're the best player in the world, stop practicing, mate. Just try and stay the best player in the world, but don't don't try and go for, like, the don't greatest of all time. Yeah, just be the best. Just just play down to the level of your competition. No, you, what you're trying to do is exceed, try and send your competition. So it should be the same with broadcasting, in my opinion. The reason why you do awesome cold content is so that ESL goes, fuck, we better get our shit together. We look like idiots compared to these guys. Well, how, do you, how did ESL start doing skits? It's because Flashpoint came around. We started doing skits. They saw how the community were appreciating the skits, and they were like, oh, we should do that too. I mean, well, this is also why I know that the, like it's absolutely just bad business by Blast. Blast doesn't know how to sell sponsorships. There you go. I said it. That's why they need to take like potentially genocidal sponsorships like Neom fucking three years ago. Because I can tell you right now, I know why we had our own little Valve type fucking profiles on players at Flashpoint 2, not even a big competition. We had a sponsor that that was a direct deliverable for the sponsor. We tied it in, we sold them. We will go, we'll make these documentaries. And then when people love them, they're going to see your name and associate that with your brand, that you're cool enough to sponsor it. By the way, you take a sponsor of your tournament, headset sponsor, video card, and you make it something like, you know, the fucking sound of Counter-Strike, like the vision that, to be a great player. And that's like, Zewu, fucking Nico, simple. You just, you sell it to the sponsor. So at the end of the day, People who do production, people who do tournaments, you have to have someone who's as competent at business who can sell these. And I can tell you right now, this company, Last Free Nation, has sold sponsorships and deliverables like that. So if we could do it, you can't do it as a giant TO with one and a half million views for a fucking match. So I just find that whack. And also, like I say, especially because it's the last CSGO major, the last one you had to nail this shoulder content. You had to make something, by the way, iconic that like, let's say someone in a few years just stops watching CS. They'll always be able to go back and say, oh, this was how it like ended. This is like the capstone to the narrative. 
authority. You didn't get any of that. Like the joke is he will did win on home soil in France. And was there really even anything about that? What the fuck oh. was this tournament, you know? No, just like the how'd uh, you the, miss that? <laughs> the analysis, uh, you know, the analysis desk bringing it up every now and again. Yeah, but that was about the extent true. of it, right? Which I guess is, you know, I mean, I guess that's the stopgap, right? And that's the way to get around it if you're blast. It's like, oh well, you know, we'll just count on the talent to tell that story over and over again. We don't need to do anything extra. To see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content. Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.